I turned my phone the other direction. I didn't even know I could do that with this thing that I did it. Um, cause TikTok, you have to have it going that way or it doesn't go on right. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna see what, if I do it this way and um, post it. I wonder what it's gonna be like on YouTube. So I don't know, it might be weird, it might be too small, but I just thought, oh, I'm gonna try something different. Anyways, um, so there was a couple things. Last night was weird because all day long, you know, I'm sitting here and it seemed fine, you know, still wanted to go outside a bunch of times. I feel really bad because I know she was enjoying that farm so much. Like she's totally and just like, oh God, we're just back here. She's in her little house. She can't, she barely has room to turn around. And then the yard at some point, it probably is boring, especially leaving that farm where she could just walk around and walk around. There was so much to look at, so many smells. You know, it was just a mystery all day for her. And she enjoyed it so much. <clears throat> and now I'm just like, man, I wanna get, I, I, well, you know, if it was up to me, I would just go zip right back there and <laughs> stay in that little guest house as long as I could stay and let her go out and play. I don't mind going out and picking fruit and vegetables for a place to stay. But um, anyways, I don't think it's in the cards. Um, you know, they have people coming all the time, like people who come on vacation or something. I don't think they do Airbnb. I think they just have it set up for people that they know. But anyways, um you know, it, it was, it was really nice. And I, it really kind of, um, like bit that little part of you, you know, where it's like, ah, I got to get out and get more adventures. Like I'm really, I, I know that I, I know that that is coming because I can just feel it. And I've got my suitcase out. I've got all these bar, like, I don't know. It's just weird. Cause sometimes you can just feel when something's coming and, um, uh, you know, like something big is coming. But anyways, back to, so yesterday I was sitting here and at some point I started being like, oh my gosh, you know, nothing is bothering me. No, I mean, I kept seeing things all the time. I always see things, but, um, you know, it was different than the night before. The night before it was very uh, aggressive, whatever was in there. And it was big and it was dark and it would like try and hide like where my clothes were and stuff. And, um, I, you know, I don't know. It, it was super aggressive and it, it seemed to just laugh at me when I did the clearing. And that is when I was like, geez, you know, we sit here and think like doing clearings and saging and all that stuff is, um, you know, real effective. But, you know, I mean, how do we know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, seriously. Do we have spirits come in and say, oh yeah, you ran me out with that one. <laughs> I left right away. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, we just go around doing these practices that we think are effective. But who knows? So um, anyways, it wasn't infected to this guy. You know, he was very, and he seemed to bring like an energy with him that was just and it wasn't playful energy. It was mean, kind of bullying. Like I said, they were just like nonstop feeding me negative thoughts where I had to just keep saying, shut up, get the hell away from me. And then, um, and you know what I was singing about? Cause so last night, you know, when I started feeling like, okay, oh my gosh, it's getting later. Are they going to come back? Do they just come at night? Are they going to come and harass me again? Like, oh, and I was like, okay, I just got to be strong. I got to just, you know, no matter what, I got to just say, hey, get out of my fucking space, dude. And um, and it seemed to be, you know, like there started being more and more activity. And it, always, I don't know what it is. And I've said this so many times. I don't know what it is. But when I go into the bathroom and stand in front of the mirror, it's not like when I go in and, you know, go to the bathroom or take a bath or something. It's always when I'm standing in front of the mirror. You know, you, there's so many things you do. Like, I go put lotion. I don't put lotion on my face. I put oils and stuff on my face. I do that a couple times a day. I keep my face moisturized all the time. I, um, you know, brushing your teeth. I floss. I brush my hair. Like, I'll, I'll stand in there and comb and comb and comb my hair and stuff for a long time. Like, there's lots of stuff you do. When you go in there, right? And it will feel like they just gather around the bathroom and sit and 
watch me. It's weird. <laughs> and I've been saying this for such a long time and it just is weird. But so it started feeling like that, like, you know, like the gathering was occurring. It's like, what in the hell? Why? I mean, why is it like when it starts getting towards evening, like, you know, what a stereotypical thing. The ghosts come out at night. Is it just, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I kind of felt like it was a time when we have less to focus on so that they can get more of our attention. So it's a good time for them. You know, they don't have to put out a lot of energy. They can just come in and, you know, it's dark. We can't see a lot of, you know what I mean? So, um, I was like, okay, so maybe that's what the deal is, but so last night when it started going, I just was right away. I didn't do a saging and all that stuff. I just was right away just very much like, get the fuck out of my space. And I saw this girl, just weirdly enough, I was several people talking about this yesterday. And it keeps happening. I'll talk about something, I'll go on, and then there'll be all these people talking about the same thing. So, and this girl was saying about... um if you really want to clear away some of these spirits and stuff that you need to, she had her little chant thing. And I was like, well, that's what I said, the whole thing. Um, but she was saying, when you say this, it will clear people away out of your life who are toxic. All the different toxic people. So not just, you know, spirits who are harassing you, but also um, individuals who are. So, you know, I don't know. I've already got a couple of people who aren't talking to me. Well, I have a lot of people who have fallen out of my life. So, um, but anyway, so I was just really, you know, demanding and said, you know, get out. And I said, don't, don't come. My, the, the fence of my yard is the perimeter. You can't come in past that. So get the hell out. And then it seemed to be calm. It seemed to be fine. And, you know, and I went to sleep and, um, but I woke up super early. I don't know. It's probably Stella woke me up or something, but it seemed like there was a few times I was laying in there. One of the times I woke up and all of a sudden I was like, um, oh, I was just with this person in the dream. Oh my gosh. And then it was like, oh, I want to go back to the dream. I want to go back to the dream. I want to go hang out with them some more. And, um, you know, I, I have done that before, been able to go back to sleep and go back into it. But anyways, there was other stuff I wanted to talk about. So that was just kind of update on, um, you know, the harassment, whatever's going on, which to me, I still, you know, I, I thought this a while back where I, like I, when I had said about the astral projection, when I said, you know, you got to be really careful because the men in black and stuff, they monitor that realm. Like they've got people or beings or something that are a lot more um, sophisticated than us in the supernatural or spiritual sense, you know, like, uh, like even yesterday when I was doing the clearing and stuff, you know, I'll start feeling like the avatar that we're in, in this dimension is kind of restrictive. When you're out of your body, then you can, you know, you know your own power but I don't know. There just feels like a restriction kind of when you're incarnated. And, you know, and I don't know if there is just certain beings around who are just fucking with us, trying to keep us unsettled, feeding off of our energy. Um, the whole thing is, you know, it seems like they want to kill a bunch of people off real quick. And I, and, you know, way before they awakened. And I was, you know, you can see like a good point for the people because it's going to be very traumatic to, I mean, I've already seen people who have, um, who now have realized in their panicking, like, what do I do? How do I get this out of me? And, um, but you know, I mean, we all have to face the facts. We all have this stuff in us. I mean, what's going on in New York right now? <laughs> it's, it's so funny too, because how long ago did I say there's something up with the water. I don't even remember how I said it, but I said, you know, like I had noticed drinking my own water and I had mine filtered. I was like, something's wrong. Oh, it was because when I said 
when I started putting it in the thing for Stella in the bucket outside for her to drink and the spray back. And I kept being like, oh, this smells like chemicals. What the hell is this? This isn't water. And then she would always smell it and she would always, she would always prefer. But lately she has been drinking the, the, um, not the rainwater because we don't have any rain. But, well, the other day we had some, but, you know, it's not, it's different. It's not like when it's just raining and raining and you can catch it. It's more like a, a nonstop drizzle, which I saw this girl the other day. She comes out and she goes, well, just suddenly started raining here. And she goes out and she shows up at the sky, but there's no clouds. Where's the rain coming from? I saw some guys today. Um, they were showing this video. I'm sure that this one's got to be going around because it, I keep seeing these, but this one was different. But this one, it looks like a rocket launch and it goes up and of course hits the firmament and it's just scooting across the top. Like I um, had seen that other one that was doing that and it was making a wake like there was water. And <clears throat> this one, so it is a bunch of people outside and they're like, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? And it's doing this thing across. And then all of a sudden it starts making, I don't know, it started doing a lot more stuff. It's, and like a rocket came out of the smoke and there was different smoke and it started getting bigger. It was like, it was crazy looking. <clears throat> and they're out there like, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? And then one guy in the crowd is like, that's, it's up against a ferment. It can't get past. It's trying to get out of the ferment. And then um, people are like, oh my God, look at it, it's water. And, um, you know, I couldn't see the video as well uh, to see like the spray. I don't know how I saw it the last time. Somebody must have went up really close. But anyways, the um, what it got me to thinking was like, maybe some of these people are trying to escape. <laughs> maybe they're like, because there's been so many different uh, rocket launch things lately. And um, I, I just remember when I was a kid, you know, and they were going to launch a rocket or whatever. It would be like a big deal. Like, oh, you know, and it was that Kennedy Space Center or something. You know, they're going to have a big rocket launch and, you know, spaceships going to go out in space. And it was a big thing. And now it's just like constantly, they're, oh, that's just a rocket launch. Oh, it's a rocket launch. It's like, well, who's launching all these fucking rockets? It's weird. Man, but when they were showing that one, and they were, the what they were saying, you know, was like, it's trying to get out of the ferment. And I was like, oh my gosh, they, these rich people have just got, they're all loaded up in their rockets trying to escape because they know that they're done. <laughs> they're, they're done for. There is no happy ending for them. They used their time and they used it against people and they corrupted and they hurt people. Just imagine like, all of the damage they've done, and they got to put that back in balance. So if I was them, I'd be scared to die too, because what is ahead for them? Like, they're going to spend life after life after life just being, you know, tortured by people. Like, I don't know, <clears throat> you know, uh, but I'm definitely, you know, trying to be mindful of the energy I put out. But yeah, these people who are now going to transition over and have this much that they have to put back into balance. But there is no escape. Even if they could get past the firmament, like there would be no escape. You know, I'm taking it all serious. Like that's for sure what's happening. I don't know what's happening. It's just weird because there keeps being these rockets trying to go out and people keep sharing this footage. It's just weird. And, um, <clears throat> but the water thing, you know, when I had first started saying that and then more and more and more just kept coming out about the water. And to me, like your guides will make something stand out to you. Like something will just stand out to you. Like you could hear a bunch of people talking about something, but something will stand out. That's what they want you to notice. That's what they want you to focus on. And the water was a thing that they kept telling me to focus on for a long time. But now, <clears throat> because even when I was in Spokane, whatever, a couple months ago, and I just so happened to be down there by the water treatment center place, so I got out, you know, and I got footage of it. And when I was doing that, it seemed like, you know, not very many people realize that they take the sewage and turn it back into water, <laughs> water, <laughs> turn it into some sort of clear drinking chemical concoction <clears throat> that they call water. And um, 
So look at how like what they do to change the water. They poison the lakes. They uh, they give us chemical water and they poison the skies. So the rain is a, is a poisonous water. It's like man, like what the fuck. Like they are out to kill nature, and then it is crazy. There is no fucking birds. I, yesterday, I heard this one bird. So I'm sitting out there for a long time. I even did a little video, and I hear this one bird after a while, and it seemed like it was like hollering out, "Is anybody out there? Is anybody out there?" It kept doing it, doing it. It was sounding more and more distressed, and I was like, "Oh, this poor bird." It's like calling out, trying to find his friends or, you know, some sort of connection. And there's nothing, nothing's answering him. And then he moved and he came in closer to my house because I could hear him. And then he kept doing it and doing it. And then he circled around and was on the other side of my house. And I could hear him. And I was just like, oh my God, that's just so sad. Like, I can't imagine if one of us was out there just like, you know, we couldn't find another human and we're just going around. Please, somebody, somebody come out. Because that's what I felt like he was doing. And it was, it was, it was sad. Like you could really hear the distress or you could pick up on his energy or something. It was weird. But anyways, when, um, you know, after I was sitting out there, you know, I was looking at TikToks and stuff. Still keeps wanting me to be outside. And then the sun is so far below the trees. <laughs> Fucking kidding me. The sun's a million miles away, but it just can't get over these trees. It's a big problem. So it's just so much lower. So you know, there's not hardly any sun. And I'm I'm I've got socks on. Like my feet and stuff are cold. Like I yesterday I sat in here with a sweater on when I was in the house. So I'm not boiling hot. Like trees, having a lot of trees keeps you cooler. Like everybody should have there's just certain things we should all have in our in our living space to me and trees because of the protection there's a lot of good purpose for trees and like these houses they're putting in over here and they're just you know cutting down no trees and let's just stick a bunch of houses in there it's just like weird but anyway so this guy he was going um and this had nothing to do with this part and I went back to look for this video today because I wanted to share this part of it but he um he was showing something else oh he was showing I think he's in Oregon or California maybe he was in California but he said he's from Texas and he was someplace where they pan for gold it seems like like, I don't know because I I didn't follow him before, so I didn't know you know what he was doing or his trip or whatever. But anyway, so he's showing this stuff out by the river, and he's showing like he's looking for this kind of sandy rock stuff, and then he's like, "But I've run out of time. I got to get back to camp, and I've got four miles to go, and I'm, it's going to be dark in a half hour." So he said, "You know, I'm going to take off and start going." So then he did a couple videos as he was walking. And as he started going, he stopped and then he did a video and he goes, you know what's weird? Like I'm sitting here walking and it's really weird because I'm in the forest, but listen. And he goes, all you can hear is the creek. There's no birds, there's no animals, there's nothing here. I was like, look what they're doing. It's not just in my neighborhood. You know, and I know they're hitting it hard here because I can see what they're doing to the trees. I, I know for sure it is about the forest fires to hurt us into the city. So it is, um, you know, I mean, what they're doing to the trees and stuff. And then they obviously don't care about the animals. They're going to kill them anyways with the fires, you know. And they're fires, floods, they have their things that they like to do. And... So, I mean, that, that is, you know, their plan. I don't know how far it will go. I don't know if they'll get a follow through because I'm sure they've got a lot of places set up for fires. And, you know, um, another thing that's weird too is, um, so this Tonga or Tayonga or something. So a volcano is going off. So there's the one in Iceland and I'm not sure if this is the same one, but the um because i saw this girl in iceland she kept sharing this um footage um she's a scientist 
and she was sharing the um, volcano over there and giving updates and stuff. And so she was saying, you know, it's like no big deal. It's done it before. And, you know, we're waiting to see if this happens or that happens. And then the magma is coming up. And but she said it can get to the top and then not come out. Like she was explaining all these different things. And um, so for that one, it seemed like, well, you know, maybe nothing's going to happen. So I don't know if it's the same one because this other guy that I saw sharing this one, he was way more of a like, oh shit, look what's happening. And um, he was saying that it is exploding now or erupting. And so it has lava shooting up into the sky and going down into the ocean. And so he was going through this whole thing over what it's going to do to the ocean and it's not good. And I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if it could rise the waters that much, but, um, you know, something's going to rise the water. Something's going to change the landscape for sure. Like, and I don't know if it is going to be part of the awakening or if it's going to be part of, you know, this big event that's going to happen, the cataclysm, because I still think that the awakening will happen before the cataclysm. Because the awakening is kind of to give everybody the opportunity to awaken before the cataclysm. So you can do the work on yourself so that you can understand who and what you are. So you don't think, you know, well, I'm just going to die and you're just going to die. Because I do think that they are trying to kill a bunch of people off to keep that manipulation going. So that when you are in the dead space, they can just manipulate you like... But they can't just, they are not going to have a place to come back to like that. Like, I think they're going to be like in a purgatory probably for a while. Because you can't, um, you know, like when I had talked about when my dad had passed. And when the medium went in to talk to him, he was like in a, a timeout space. And I've heard this um, from other people since I had ever talked about that this timeout space, this idea of purgatory where you have to... It is like a, a a space where it could be low vibration because you can't take low vibration into higher vibration. That's why we're in a ferment is because, you know, it has to be contained. You can't just, you know, it's uh, like a virus or something that will just spread the low vibration, toxic attitude and stuff like that. So it is so much like the never ending story. It really reminds me of the never ending story that always pops into my head the dark and the light but anyways so you know i don't know if this volcano is going to do something drastic you know that's going to cause a lot of problems that's going to wake people up i just i think that the there will be something to wake people up before the big cataclysm because I don't know. That's just how I think it would go. I don't know, though. Especially because, you know, stuff keeps going for so long now. It's like, how long can this go on? Like, something big has got to happen. You can't just keep dragging this out and dragging this out like this. So, um, another thing, too, is um, the volcano. Oh, so this was weird because a couple of... Um, a couple of months ago, I would say, and I don't know if it was like I saw it on Mr. Ballin. It's weird because he does a lot of stories that will start having something play out that has something to do with that story. Like a lot of stories. It's weird. But, um, so this one it was, and I'm not sure if this was his story, but somehow I saw this on something and it was this island, and I looked it up this morning, but I can't, I still can't remember the names of it. But it was a place, um, I still, I can't remember if it was South America or Africa. It was definitely not Europe or Asia. So it was either in um, Africa or South America, those, one of those continents. And so it was um, this town, a village. Oh, which, by the way, I was thinking, you know, because they have the villages, the townships, the districts, the um, parishes, the, um, 
what was the one? Um, cause I just thought of the burrows. It's like, see all of these different names of these areas. Like that's got to come from somewhere. Cause we don't all have the same thing. Like everywhere I've lived, it's always been cities and towns, but now I really want to go to a holler. I just really like that girl is always showing. She did this drive showing like, um, the haulers that she grew up in. I was like, oh my gosh, it just looks like beautiful out in the woods. So when I saw him showing the haulers on that show, it looked like, you know, one city or it looked like one side of a street. Like they had everybody on one side of the street. And I don't know if it's called a hauler because it was as far as you could holler. This is the, the biggest, the neighborhood. Like, I don't know. But anyways, so... Um, back to the, the, um, this little town place. So there was some problem that happened and overnight 2000 people died. I think there was like a couple people who lived in that town. And so then when they got up and everybody was dead. So, and they, it was kind of, it seems like it might've been like in the middle of the day, it was some time and it was like, they were knocked out. You know, like what I say sometimes, how it feels like that they'll just knock us out with something. Like you just can't stay awake. And which I, I know, yeah, I just feel like I've had confirmation of that kind of stuff. Even at that old movie where it said that they use the satellites to gas us, um, uh, to do that, to knock us out, to control us for different periods of time. I think it's gotten way bigger than that. But anyways, so... Um, this person got up and saw everybody was dead. So they went to the next town. They took off walking to get to the next town and half of that town was dead. And they started trying to, um, get help or something. Like if I remember the story, right. But anyways, what it ended up because no, like they were trying to figure out like how all these people just die and why didn't these people die and what's going on here. And it was something with the water something with like the co2 or something something with an underground volcano or something released some sort of toxins that came through the water that came out and it poisoned all the people and all the people died but the weird thing is is that right now i've seen a couple of different people showing the hudson river and you know, at first I was seeing where they were just showing up on the shoreline. It was like bubbling all on the shoreline. But then the guy I saw show, showing it yesterday, he was saying that the Hudson River is boiling. Like all of the water is boiling. So I don't know. I don't know if it's just getting more and more and worse and worse. But at the same time, they're telling people, you know, to be prepared for this something to happen which is just it made me start thinking like this sounds kind of like the same thing that happened with that um town was something with the water and it just poisoned everybody so i don't know to me it seems concerning like that you know if they're just gonna poison all these people like so many people have had these prophetic dreams about New York and it always has to do with being underwater I don't know if the I don't know it's just something weird is going on something creepy you know with the water and stuff and I also saw you know those three big red things on the ocean and then the government just was like oh we're just gonna put a parameter <laughs> nobody can go near them a thousand miles around them everybody keep away Okay, <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Let's just pretend like nothing's happening. But, you know, they know if something's happening. They're, they they know. But I heard somebody yesterday saying, those things are moving. They're coming towards us. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and they're coming. They're going to show up in New York, these three big red things, and they're going to come up, levitate out of the water. Start going, hey, guys, we're here for you. These people are trying to kill you and we're here to help you. <laughs> I don't know. And then, so we already had the sinkhole in China open up, right? Um, where was the one? A, a big giant sinkhole yesterday opened up. See, the one was China. Was this one in Chile? Was someplace, another big giant um, 
sinkhole. It's like the same kind of size too, because they said it's like 650 feet down. It's like, what? That is so crazy. And it just all of a sudden just opened up right in this little town or something. But they said, luckily there was no houses where it was, you know, well, because it's all supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen. And all of these different realities that keep surfacing and showing us like, you know, we have different realms, different realities, different beings and stuff all around us. They're all living lives. And we, being in lower vibration, we were just here to learn about ourselves, stay focused on our own experience. But now we're opening up to new experiences because we're in this state of growth, of expansion. So way more is opening up to us. But the... um it just seems it just seems funny, you know, when you think about these rockets and they look like they're trying to escape desperately, just riding up through. Like, there's got to be a weak spot in this ferment. We got to get out. <laughs> and then we got these big red things in the ocean that are moving towards us, I guess. And then you have I don't know. It just seems like a lot of stuff happening. And um, I think it is exciting to see like what what is going to happen like we got sinkholes like i'm really curious about the new one that opened up and uh, i mean are they just going to start just opening up all over the place we're just going to start having sinkholes just opening up everywhere we're going to have you know i i don't know <laughs> i just don't know it's like you don't even know what to expect anymore anything anything can happen um but, you know, don't drink the water. And it's clearly, it's so crazy too. Is because so when I had been talking about like the water and the, um, that they take sewage and make it into water. When I first was saying that, people were just like, no, no, they don't. <laughs> like, well, I showed footage of the place. Like, I don't know, maybe in other cities, they're still collecting water. Maybe they do have an underground water from somewhere even though now california is going to start charging people for their own well water <laughs> the absurd bullshit that they try and do all the time is so crazy and like well we'll see how many people will be like okay well we'll pay you because people have got to stop saying no fuck off you're not fucking no fuck off the government is going to push and push and push and push until we push back and, you know, it's like Red Rover, Red Rover. When you know you have other people on your team, it's a lot easier to push back and say, no, <laughs> no, we will not comply. But, you know, that's what we got to get. Is everybody on the same team? That's what's important. So that we all do know we can stand up to them. And we have to. And there is this study, too, that I had just seen. And it was a guy, it was in the 70s or something, and it was, um, I think he was a guru or something. And he was like, um, that we're going to see what a difference meditation makes. So they took a group of people in DC and had to meditate. I don't know how long it lasted, but when they did it, it did make, um, there was less crime. All of the things were better. Like there was less crime and whatever the other things were, it did make a difference. You know, when we all get on the same page, we will make a difference. We just got to get everybody on the same page. We got to get everybody to keep waking up, keep questioning things. And it sucks because people wake up, but then they just get stuck. I see people on um, TikTok and they just keep saying the same things over and over and over. And I'm sure some people think that that's what I'm doing because I keep saying they're poisoning you. They're poisoning you. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. <clears throat> But, you know, I mean, they are actively poisoning us and people do need to actively take care of themselves uh, because, again, water. So when I, I just find it very curious. So you're saying that you guys have been testing the water like you knew sickness isn't broken down in water. So you're just watching it. But where did these things come from? Where did polio come from? Like who had it? Who got it into the water? Like, there's just a lot of shitty shit that is like, I don't <laughs> think about all the sicknesses. Like, you know, I mean, we lived through AIDS and, you know, if they're just going to the bathroom and putting it in the water, 
And how did we all survive it? You know, we weren't all taking medicine to survive it. And how many other sicknesses? Like, if, if it was all just going from people going to the bathroom, then it goes to the plant to change it into drinking water. What in the world? If, if I just think it's bullshit. Oh, all of a sudden, oh, well, we've got sickness now in it, and it's making people, everybody's got polio now. It's like, oh, okay. So y'all didn't just give everybody that. You're just saying that it just came in the water. But how many sicknesses? Wouldn't we all have just all had every sickness now? Wouldn't we all just be sick from all of these different sicknesses that we're sharing from pooping and then drinking everybody's poop? Like, <laughs> I don't know. This is one of those things to me. It's like, well, you got to be logical. You got to look at it. You know, how does that make sense? It makes sense that they are doing their same typical thing. We're going to give you a sickness and then we're going to just, <laughs> we've got a little beard over here. We're just going to say it's that, you know, they just mask everything they're doing. They just pretend like they're doing something different than they are. And it, it just, the, also the absurdity, like all the footage of this mayor, oh, drink your water, <laughs> get out, we've got these cups, like your refillable cup, I drink New York tap water, <laughs> like, oh my God, it just, so he, he's out there saying that, you know, pushing his agenda, and then, you know, a couple weeks later, everybody said, well, you know what I say, I say, whoever that mayor was, he was being humiliated. He was, he's done some shady shit. And everyone who's done some shady shit, who was it? It was, I think, Katy Perry concert that I saw the other day of somebody was sharing something about this concert that I, I don't, I don't even get why people are going to these things right, right now. Like, like, you think life is back to normal? Like, but, um, so, uh, um, I think it was Katy Perry, but you can look it up. But she, during her concert, she just started throwing pizza slices out at people. Like, okay, well, we knew she was involved. I mean, she's got articles saying how, you know, she's like Chrissy Teigen. Yeah, eat a little human. It's good for you. <laughs> you know, like, they're just, it to me, it is like, you go do something that's just super, super disgusting and then you try and get everybody else to do it so you're not so disgusted with yourself. That's what I think these people do. Like, yeah, have a little bite. Just taste a little. <clears throat> uh, you know, no thanks. I, I, apparently we've all tasted it. So, yeah, you know, who knows? Um, but these people who are into it. But her having to throw pizza slices out. This guy having to go on and do this commercial telling everybody to drink the water right before this deadly disease comes out that is in the water. <laughs> like All of that stuff is there to humiliate the people who have done wrong. It is like they are being, it's like they're, they get to be on the stage, but it's all in this humiliating way, you know, to make them look stupid, make them look foolish. The person who was at Katy Perry's thing, who was sharing this, they're like, well, you know, I really like her and stuff, but I really don't like the way she's just wasting food like that. There's people who are hungry. <laughs> it's so funny. How many people now who I have seen of the new uh, conspiracy theorist of uh, progressive conspiracy theorists, the things that they look at and the things that they notice and the things they talk about. And it's, it's just, it's very different, you know, but that's their reality. That's what they see. That's what they think is going on. It's going to be quite interesting when things start to really play out, you know, when things start really coming to the surface, because right now it is still like you have to have good sources. You have to know where to look for your information and it is, it is so much misinformation. I just saw right before I did this, there was um this guy on TikTok and he's one of the people who is <clears throat> I I was think he's kind of just stuck because he's kind of just super like 
at first he was like really panicking. Now he just seems like he's just like, <laughs> like a balloon with the air out. Like, come on, you guys. <laughs> Why can't you see what I'm telling you? And his is all about politics and government and stuff like that. But he was just showing, um, Joe had just said that he had killed, um, <laughs> from his bed, uh, with his sickness again, <clears throat> some, um, not Osama bin Laden, but one of those people, he said, um, I think last week he said, yeah, we, we killed him. He was involved with whatever bullshit thing, the towers or something that he said. And, um, anyways, this guy was sharing an article from a couple years ago where that guy actually died from an upper respiratory infection a couple years ago. So he's been dead for a few years and Joe's claiming it now. But that's the same thing as what I was saying, like about the dam, the gorgeous one. It is um, the footage that I saw last year. Now it's being on the news and they're saying it's happening right now. It's like, they lie. They just lie and lie and lie. And it goes way further than just about who's dead and who's alive. They just, everything is manipulation. Everything is to trick us, to keep us confused, keep us unsettled. And that's why to me, I really, I don't think it really matters as much about what information you devour and, you know, you know, all of these people going down rabbit holes, which, you know, everybody who goes down rabbit holes, we all end up down the same rabbit holes. We all end up seeing the same shit. And, you know, so clearly the shit is going on. And the, um, the people who, you know, run across stuff and they're just like, well, I don't know if it's true. Cause it, to me, a lot of people, I tried doing this on Twitter like where I was sharing actual articles and stuff like that. And you'd share them and share them. And people would say, no, that's bullshit. Oh, that's bullshit. Oh, why don't you just go read another, uh, you know, right wing conspiracy theory bullshit article or something, you know? So I was like, okay, I'm not going to sit here and share sources because all they want to do is just defend their stance. They're not even going to even try and acknowledge this information or even look at it or go do more research. It doesn't, you know, bite them at all into, huh, that's interesting. I want to know more. No, no, it's just defense, defense, defense. Just like I said, you know, next door, anything I say, she'd go in and research the shit out of that. See, you know, to prove to me that I'm crazy. But anything else, it's like, oh, no, just accept it. <clears throat> so, um, but what was I going to say about the, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going all over the place. But it's always the same message, you know, that it is just, oh, yeah. So any of the information you get, I really don't think, you know, you don't have to go around and share information. You don't have to go tell people. If something resonates, that is true for you. There's something in it for you. There's something in it you are to learn from it. So you don't have to go around proving everything to somebody. The information is just to get us to start thinking. That's what I believe. Get us to start using our minds, to start questioning things. Because I don't think we're going to have all the truth for a while. Like where we actually get to be like, oh, so this is why, this is what, this is. And I had even heard, you know, we're not even, we're only going to get a per percentage of the truth because it's just so huge. There's so much to cover. And there's so much that they need to just get us into position. You know, they just need to first take out all of the bad players and then explain to people like why that had to be done. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff like we may not find out about for a while. I think it's just going to be floods of information, but I just don't think that it really matters that much like over some of the stuff. Like because there is so much lies, there is so much confusion and there's so much like okay, well, this happened, but let's just hold off talking about that for a couple of years. We'll use it when it works best for us. And so I don't know. 
Because I just, I feel like, you know, some of these whistleblowers and stuff, like, you sit and listen to them and be like, man, is this for real? Like, I have been hearing more and more whistleblowers. There's so many on the sex stuff. There's tons of whistleblowers now. And the stuff that was going on, it wasn't, I mean, it was obviously global. And obviously our politicians are all involved. But... It, there was such huge communities in different cities, like all of the the upper crust folk, like the girl in Connecticut that was talking, and hers, it was her family, that she was born into it, and it was like, at first, she said they were just like doing swinging, like all these people, all their parents and stuff having orgies with the kids there and stuff, but then she said, then it started involving the kids. But so this other lady who I saw yesterday, she was talking about in Texas. And I've seen it like all over the place. I've seen so many different ones now of different cities. I think every city. And this one person that was talking about yesterday said that they have four, um, four big holidays, big ritualistic holidays that they do a ritual. Like that's... A little kid or a woman it, it depends on what the offering is I guess you know and so this person was talking about I think it was whatever city they were talking about I'm could have been Ottawa or something that they said um, that there was 37 tri they didn't call them tribes they didn't like covens that's what they called them like these groups divide up into something that they call covens, which I always thought of like a witch thing, but people are really putting it together now. Like the whole thing about the Bible, you're really worshiping Lucifer and that's who they worship. And it's all this trick and uh, just all of this stuff. I keep seeing people all putting all this stuff together, but so <clears throat> when they do, this person was talking about, that's just one city 37 covens, four rituals, and he was doing the math. Like, that's a lot of um, people being kidnapped, be murdered and stuff. And all the stuff that I had said before, too, you know, that they force pregnancy on. Like, if, if you are taken and you're taken to one of these places, they will put you through all sorts of stuff. Like, they will make you do things to other kids to ter terrorize and torment you. They'll make kids kill other kids. Like, horrible shit, man. And then, um, the, um, what was I going to say? The, um, something with the kids. Um, well, anyways, they make them do terrible things to each other. And, oh, and then before... Like, if they're going to do these rituals and stuff on them first, they will, they use them like dogs, like um, dog breeders use dogs. And that's what they do with little kids, with whoever. So, they are always keeping their surplus going. You know, and one thing too is like in poor communities and stuff where people feel more forced into selling their kids you know, and then they take these women, uh, you know, kidnap them when they're young. So you take a bunch, you know, from these other countries, especially. Um, and then they take all these girls who are like 10 years old. So say they go to like Gator Boy, go into India and go in there, you know, UNICEF and they're going to help. Like just when that girl in Kentucky said, now the floods are happening, there's all these people there trying to kidnap people. That's what they do. They get everything unsettled where people don't know for sure who's there and where, you know, and then they go in and just, and it's the same thing that went on with Katrina and they're doing it right now in Kentucky. It's like re, redoing Katrina all over again. Like people up on their roofs, not getting rescued and shit. So the, um, but so they go into a place, take, you know, all these girls, these young girls start impregnating them right away. And then um, use them like a little um, breeding factory, use them up. And then by the time they're whatever age, then just um, 
you know, so say they're like 13, 14, they've had a few kids and it's just like, okay, well, it's time. You know, we're going to do some gruesome thing on you and, um, or just make her into supper, whatever. These people are just so warped. It's just weird. It's just creepy. So anyways, it seems like, you know, if I was in, if I swear, I, I, if I was in New York, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that I could. It definitely seems like something is going to happen in New York. Like it definitely seems like something's going to happen in a lot of places. Like even up here, I feel like something's going to happen. It's just too, it's too weird. It's too weird that it's so eerie that there's just all this death around. The people are just still like oblivious still just playing along like, oh, well, what should we do next? Like, you know, we're going to have this barbecue. <laughs> to me, I I was really like, nah, I don't care about it. But, you know, I don't know. Like there, there becomes a part of you where it's like, well, you know, you got to make the best, the best of the situation and stuff like that. But there's like everybody is oblivious. Like you can't even have a conversation about anything. You can't talk about what's real because none of them even fucking know. So, I don't know. It isn't like they're, I don't know. I don't know. Everything I say is just going to sound judgmental because it's like that they don't, they're oblivious to what's going on, but, you know, maybe that's what they're here for, to just be oblivious to what's going on so that it's more impactful or they just, I don't know, transition out without ever knowing. Which, like yesterday, I said, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you come and go through all this stuff just to be like, not do any work, not not do anything towards your healing? It just doesn't make any sense to me. So, I I don't know. So, I think something big is going to happen. Like, it would not surprise me at all if a forest fire started here and it became, you know, we're all having to try and escape the fire or, or whatever. I think something, something's going to happen. So in a bunch of different places and it already has been, but something, something big is coming and they're going to keep attacking all of these places until whatever happens, happens. I don't know. I, I definitely feel like things are getting close. Things are picking up speed or whatever, like. I mean, are they going to just have the Hudson just boiling and then all of a sudden just stops? The sinkholes, oh, well, you know, the red thing out in the ocean. Ah, oh, don't worry about that. Nancy and Tom, I mean, the bank's having no money. Now, in and in, in the absurdity, like where they're like, oh, we're going to hire 80,000 more people for the IRS. And there's people who are going around saying that they're trying to get jobs. They're going and applying and applying and applying and nobody will hire them. And then somebody responded to that person and said that the government is giving people money to keep their jobs open. Like they don't want the jobs filled because they're out to destroy the economy. They're out to destroy our ways of life. They're out to destroy. They want to create homelessness. They want us to be just completely dependent on them. It's just so weird how they just keep going and going with their same thing when they know that they lose. But they are just, you know, they're not quitters. That's for sure. They're going to take it. They're going to ride it to the end. So, but I think that the end is getting close. Like something's going to give. So anyways, you know, we just got to keep getting through each, each day. It's like that AA thing of, I don't know, I don't know all of the, but it's the one where, you know, each day. You just have to get through that day. You have to get through each day, like battling your disease or something. And it is, this is kind of like battling the disease of the mind because it can get your mind just racing and going and panicking and stressing out. And that's what they want us to do. And we have to, and it's about the mastery of the mind and our emotions. So it's up to us to, you know, pull it in and take control because they want to keep it out of control. They want to just keep chaos and it. And it feels like chaos, 
And they're gonna hire 80,000 more people when then we've got all these people who are homeless and people who can't afford to buy gas and food. There's just, there's so many things where it's just like, you know, look at all the shit we have put up with. It is just, it's, it's ridiculous. I really, I don't even, I don't know. When I, when I went up the road the other day and I walked, um, up the road, I did, I could have taken my bike, but I was like, I just kind of want to walk. And I was thinking that, you know, people just don't walk anywhere. They don't. In other countries, they do, and that's why they're in such better shape. But in America, everybody has just become so lazy. They don't want to walk anywhere. They don't want to, for whatever reason, whatever excuses they make. Well, I don't want to get my hair messed up. Oh, it's too hot. Oh, it's too cold. Let's do this. Let's do that. But every excuse in the world to just not go out and take care of themselves. But, you know, look at how people pile into cities, sit in their car for hours and hours with all of these emissions, when they sit there and say, I'm so concerned about the planet and all of these emissions. But look at how easy it would be to change things. Leave the city. Go get go and get a place and grow your own food. You don't even have to go anywhere near the city. And right there, we cut down on emissions. And I don't know, the... There's so many people, like the bus goes past my house and so many people, like I've ridden the bus a million times. I used to ride it all the time in California, in Spokane. I rode the bus all the time. And so many people won't ride the bus. But then they say, oh, they're so concerned about emissions and stuff like that, which I know that is not what the problem is. The problem is the corporations poisoning everything and then getting us to be dependent on things like cars and stuff. They they lean us towards these things, you know, but we play along. It's up to us to say, well, wait a minute, this isn't very good for the the um the climate. This isn't very good for our earth to have all these poisons. So what can we do different? How can we do something different? And it's definitely not electric cars. If you go in and you see like the, for what they have to do to get the lithium for the batteries for the cars, and you have to buy new batteries for the cars and stuff, it's just another thing for them to make money on while they destroy the planet. Because if you go look at the lithium mines, it's a huge destruction on the planet. The fucking windmills are huge destruction because like I when I went on my trip I saw so many broken ones and they don't have anything to do with the broken ones there's nowhere to put them like all of these giant plastic things that they have nothing to do with them it's just they don't care about the planet they don't care the plastics the petroleum all of that stuff that won't break down that is toxic is all of their development we didn't go out and develop this shit. They did. And they took it from people driving electric cars already. Like, And I doubt it was lithium batteries. I'm sure it was something with free energy. So I don't know. I just, I don't know. You know, there's a lot, a lot to come out, a lot to go full circle. I know that we're moving out of Edison time and we're moving into Tesla time. So... And, you know, I, I think we're getting closer and closer every day. <laughs> so that's all we can do is just keep on, you know, keeping our chin up and just do that. Like whatever that AA thing is, like each day, you just got to get through that day. Each day it's just like, okay, I can get through this day. I, I think in that one, it's like, I can go and not drink each day, you know, whatever it is. I think you you know what I'm talking about. So anyways, I've been talking a long time, probably about nothing. But I don't know. I would say, you know, there is a lot of stuff to watch in the water right now. <laughs> That's for sure. And the sinkholes, you know, watch out for the sinkholes. They're just, they're just dropping out all over the place, I guess. So I think that's exciting. I'm, I'm really excited for things to, once things start breaking free, to really go out on some adventures. Like I'm I'm so anxious to go out on some adventures. And I know Stella is too. She's just like, let's get the fuck out of here. And I, I keep seeing different people talking about different things. And it seems like different communes and communities and stuff are popping up. Who knows? Maybe I'll just go 
be in one of those, start some commune with some people or something. I don't know. I saw one, and I think this was in Alabama. No, it was in Atlanta, Georgia. And there was, um, I don't know, it said it was um, one of those things where the people get together uh, with the signs. I can't remember. Protest. They said it was a protest, but it looked like some sort of uh, a hippie, um, what is that word called? when they, um, like a hippie jubilee or something, like they're all out there singing and dancing. I was like, oh man, I want to go. Um, and they're all out in the woods. So I, I don't know. I, I may just go and find some hippie commune, go join a hippie commune and just go live in peace, peace and love. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go look for a hippie commune. So I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.